Hello there, this is Tim Skinner here at AfricaCom 2015 and today I'm speaking to John Bernard who's the Global Director of Marketing for Firefox OS. Hi John, how are you? Tim, good to meet you. I'm well, how are you Likewise. doing? Likewise, yes, very well, thank you. So, I understand that you are speaking at AfricaCom this week. Um, should we just kick off by going over some of the things you expect to be talking about during your session? Sure. So tomorrow we'll be talking about uh, connecting the next billion people here on the continent. We'll probably be talking about technology, how technology is empowering people across different countries. Uh, we've launched Firefox OS in 14 countries now with Orange here in Africa. And I think a lot of the, te the themes of technology helping people, helping them in their lives, be it with education, be it through connecting with others, friends, family, or through work, are some of the themes that I expect to hear and talk about tomorrow. Okay. So one of the big themes that we've that we've discussed a lot this week at AfricaCom is uh, is the use of digital to drive the betterment of, of mm -hmm. African sort of socio-economic uh, status. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and so Firefox OS is Mozilla's operating system, um, primarily Correct. focusing emerging markets. I That's understand. right. Yep. Um, so would you like to tell us a little bit more about how um, Firefox OS has evolved, how it's launched, and how sure. it's how it's doing across sure. the continent? Sure. So um, the story, in a nutshell, we launched in July 2013 mm -hmm. across Latin. In America. Yep. Last year we moved into Southeast Asia, India, Bangladesh and 2015 has really been our year of growth in Africa, launching mm -hmm. in markets in Africa, having one device, the Orange Cliff, made by Alcatel OneTouch and um, so far so good. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't talk about sales because this is really the remit of people like Orange Fine. and Alcatel um, but what we found is the success of the phone and, and the feedback of the phone has been very good. Mm -hmm. We're up for an award this right. evening uh, for phone of the year, African right. phone of the year, up against two others. So, so far the feedback has been very positive and we're hoping this will continue into 2016. So tell me a little bit about how you tailored an operating system to a, uh, a market which has a growing smartphone penetration mm -hmm. um, of, let's say, slightly more affordable smartphones. That's right. Um, <clears throat> how do you tailor that to the right demographic then, to an emerging demographic? So for Firefox OS, we've always looked at having a, a low footprint on the device, on the OS, which means that you can actually build hardware that's more affordable. Right. And that was really key for us. When we launched back in 2013, we really looked at devices sub $100 for the emerging markets of, at that time, Latin America. As things have progressed, we're now looking at $40 smartphones, really bringing to life feature phone upgraders. But here in Africa, it's more people buying a smartphone for the first time. Um, and how do we target it? How do we look at people? We look at students, we look at families, we look at working professionals. The next billion, they say, are going to be coming online over the next five years, most of which are here in Africa. And so for us, it was really important having a focus here on the continent and producing a smartphone, a device that can really fit a lot of those different target markets. Sure. Okay. And one of the things that um, I heard in the minister's keynote this morning was talking about the rollout of um, more advanced I ICT infrastructure, getting more people learning how to utilize these things. But it seems that one of the one of the ways that connectivity has really evolved in Africa has been through mobile. So mm -hmm. how do you see the future of mobile services evolving in Africa and how that's going to help connect more and more people? So I think you'll see a lot more local services, first of all, to answer your question. Whereas obviously we're getting all the big name apps such as Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram. I think you'll see a plethora of just local type apps, local type services that will attack or will service lots of these markets. What is successful in Cote d'Ivoire, for example, may not work in Madagascar, may not work certainly in Egypt. So that breadth of services that your mobile phone, our mobile phones, will bring to communities and people throughout Africa, I think is what we'll see a lot more of moving forward. Mm. And, um, and just sort of forward facing then, um, let's look sort of say three to five years in the mm -hmm. future. I, I hate to use the dreaded term 2020, but it seems We're there. to be what, We're what everyone there. focuses on already. Um, where do you see where do you see the, the continent going? Where do you see digital services going over the next few years? Good question. Um, so obviously many more people will have smartphones. I think uh, smartphone penetration will be a lot more prevalent across all the markets. Um, ease of services and ease of connectivity. So I think there'll be a lot more base stations. I think there will be a lot more players bringing different types of network. Obviously, you've got people like Google and Facebook bringing a, a more disruptive model to Africa. Um, 
It's interesting because in discussions we've been having this week, we see African consumers using their devices more as consumption devices. But actually, some of the conversations we've been having talk about these as productivity devices rather than just consumption. So it won't be about just social networking or uh, keeping in touch. People will be doing and using these devices more and more for their work mm. um, and to grow themselves as individuals, as businesses. So I think the phone will become a lot more, in the next three to five years, an accessory that somebody will have as an essential rather than a nice to have. Mm. In the UK, in Europe, in North America, people will leave their house, they'll have their keys, their wallet and their phone. And I think in three to five years time, you might see some of that emerging in Africa where this becomes their one thing that they keep hold of and, and make sure they never use. An essential, as already mentioned. Mm. And so just finally then, before, before we wrap up, um, we're obviously here at Africa Com. Mm -hmm. So what do you think of shows like this which act as a sort of a fora and meeting place for a number of different stakeholders in the industry to come together how do you think these sort of things help to drive further betterment of, of the industry really well i think this show has been fantastic so this is our second year here mm -hmm. um, last year as per this year we were sponsors and we are sponsors of the show this year mm -hmm. we have meeting rooms it's a fantastic environment for people across africa to come together talk about the issues mm -hmm. uh, to talk about some of the problems we have within the mobile industry and rectify those problems to give the user and consumers across Africa a better service to empower themselves. Um, this is a great show and for us we'll definitely look to be here again next year because it's rare that you can get people again from as far north as Egypt down to Botswana, South Africa in one place talking about all the pertinent issues and, and discussing them openly as we do here. So long may the show continue. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Cool.